All right, good evening, everyone. It's six o'clock. We're going to go ahead and get started. Hello, my name is Michael Spaith, and I am a principal planner for the town of Oral Valley and host of tonight's neighborhood meeting. This meeting is part of the public outreach process for the private property owners applications proposing a new use and standards at the Oro Valley Marketplace. The requests are to develop apartments, hotels, and an entertainment district with recreational amenities. Thank you for joining us this evening as it is integral to hear from you. Our primary purpose tonight is to bring all the comments we've received together and have a discussion built upon the conversations we've had during the first neighborhood meeting and the four focus area meetings. Tonight, the applicant is going to present a revised plan addressing many of the comments heard during the first neighborhood meeting. Now for tonight's agenda. First, I will quickly provide information about the review process and ways for you to stay involved. I'll pr pr provide a little background on the property. I'll briefly cover the applicant's requests and then summarize the community's feedback from the first neighborhood meeting and the focus area meetings. Next, Ms. Carrie Sylvan from Lazarus and Sylvan, representing the property owner, will provide detailed information about their proposal and any changes that were made since the first neighborhood meeting. Then it will be your turn to ask any questions and comments you may have. Lastly, I will provide more information about upcoming meetings as the process moves forward. I also wanted to let you know that an informational video um, has been posted on this project's webpage on ovprojects.com and frequently asked questions uh, document will be posted there soon. If you haven't viewed the video, uh, we strongly encourage you to do so. Our number one goal tonight is to have a fair, efficient and productive meeting. At this point, you may be familiar with online interactive Zoom meetings but for those who aren't or just need a refresher, I will provide more information about how Zoom works and how to participate shortly. If anyone is having trouble using Zoom during the meeting, please contact Ms. Malini Sims, who's a principal planner with the town at 520-229-4836 for assistance. Tonight's meeting is scheduled to go no later than 7.30 p.m. Finally, I'd like to note that this Zoom meeting video and the PowerPoint presentation will be posted on obprojects.com as soon as possible. Comments will also be posted online on the project webpage in a neighborhood meeting summary, which gets forwarded to the Planning and Zoning Commission and Town Council when they consider the applications. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. The applicant's proposals include three separate yet related requests. First is a request to amend the existing zoning standards. Second is to reclassify the privately owned wash within the shopping center to allow for the development of the entertainment district. Please note, no changes to big wash are proposed. Lastly is to bring all the pieces together through a revised site and landscape design. I will go through each of these briefly later in my presentation. And again, the applicant is gonna provide greater detail during her presentation. For these types of applications, the town requires applicants to engage in community outreach as it is important to hear your comments and questions early and often. So where are we in that process? We are at the second community-wide neighborhood meeting here highlighted with a yellow star. Unless there are substantial changes, this meeting is likely to be the final neighborhood meeting before being considered by the Planning and Zoning Commission and Town Council. So this whole process started with the in-person community-wide neighborhood meeting in March, 2020, which had a significant amount of community input regarding the proposal. Since then, the applicant has provided a formal submittal and resubmittal with more specifics about the requests, which staff has been reviewing for code compliance. I previously mentioned that that informational video had been posted on ovprojects.com that was intended to provide updated information about the project. We held four focus area meetings throughout August, the purpose of which were to give immediate neighbors an opportunity to have an in-depth conversation with the applicant about specific issues affecting their neighborhood. Now that the focus group meetings have concluded, we are here again at the second community-wide neighborhood meeting to bring everything together. The applicant's requests all require consideration by the Planning and Zoning Commission and Town Council. The dates are not set for those hearings, 
but the public will have an opportunity to speak at each and notices will be sent out in advance once scheduled. Property owners near the site will continue to be notified of upcoming meetings directly by mail. Yellow signs will be posted in multiple locations on the site and information will continue to be posted online at ovprojects.com. If you weren't notified about this meeting and wish to be for future meetings, please send us a request with your name and address to ask at orovalleyaz.gov. Our focus through this public outreach process has been on the future of the development, but I'd like to provide a brief history on the property. The development's design was approved in 2006 through an extensive public participation process. The center opened in 2008 with over 800,000 square feet of retail, restaurant, and office space, and to date, a number of building pads remain vacant. A couple important elements of the prior approval include the multi-use path along the edge of the development, which was recently redone that connects to the larger county trail system. Also notable was the restoration of Big Wash, shown here in green, which was restored from a previously degraded area to the dense vegetation seen today. This area is now owned by Pima County and is permanently protected as open space. The applicant is requesting to permit apartments and revise some zoning standards. Specifically, the applicant is seeking to adjust the permitted building height for portions of the development and to reduce the building setbacks and buffer yards for portions along Oracle and Tangerine roads. Again, Ms. Sylvan will provide greater detail about their proposal, but as a brief overview, an apartment with a 75 foot height and a 49 foot tall hotel are proposed along Tangerine Road, shown as A and B. A 49 foot tall hotel at the entertainment district is proposed where the C is located. An apartment with a 59 foot height and a 49 foot tall hotel are proposed along Oracle Road, notated here by the B and D. Letter F is an alternate location for the hotel proposed in location E. The applicant is also pursuing purchase of right of way along both Oracle and Tangerine Roads to increase the developable area. Second request is to reclassify the privately owned wash within the center, shown here in yellow, to allow for the development of recreational amenities, a gathering area, and event space known as the entertainment district. Lastly, to bring all the pieces together, the applicant is proposing a revised site and landscape design, which will show the design and circulation of the proposed apartments, hotels, and entertainment district, as well as details regarding the design of parking and circulation of the undeveloped areas. As I stated previously, throughout the month of August, we held four focus area meetings to allow immediate neighbors the opportunity to have an in-depth conversation with the applicant and staff about issues affecting their specific neighborhoods. The meetings were well attended and good conversations were held at each. The meeting videos and PowerPoint presentations for each focus area meeting have been posted on the project's webpage at ovprojects.com if you'd like to view those. Throughout that public participation process, we have heard a number of consistent comments and questions, including the need for an amount of proposed apartment units, the proposed height of the apartments and hotels with regard to views impacts of the Catalina Mountains, parking and the amount of traffic the new uses will generate, specifically increased traffic along Oracle Road, lighting and noise associated with the uses and entertainment district, whether or not the project will be phased, the desire from the community to see the center revitalized, impacts to water in the area, and lastly, the affordability of the apartment. So with those comments and questions summarized, I'd like to now turn it over to Ms. Sylvan, representing the property owner to provide more detail regarding their proposal and to discuss some of those concerns. Ms. Sylvan? Can you hear me? We can, yep. Great, um, thank you, Mr. Spaeth, and um, thank you to everybody for spending a, a Monday evening with us. 
Um, I want to, um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna run through our presentation as Mr. Spaeth indicated, and then um, open it up, um, turn it back over to Mr. Spaeth for questions. Uh, we're very excited about this project. As, um, as was indicated, we've been working with town staff since our first neighborhood meeting back at the beginning of March uh, 2020, um, which seems like it was a long, long, long time ago with everything that's gone on. I um, want to thank um, all of you who have been participating in our four focus meetings uh, this past August, last month. Um, working with our closest neighbors, I see um, many of you are, um, are back on for this meeting. We received great and mostly positive feedback with a lot of questions, as Mr. Um, Spaeth indicated. We heard concerns about traffic, heights, and some of the other issues that he outlined, and we're working to address those while also achieving the vision and success of the project. Um, go to, you can go to the next slide. So first I want, for those of you who weren't at the March meeting, um, I wanna to introduce Town West. They are a family owned developer, uh, local. They've been in this region for over 40 years. They purchased the Oro Valley Marketplace in September of 2019. Um, they really work hard. These are some of their other projects to create successful developments that the community can be proud of. Um, a lot of this is repositioning projects to see their full potential. Um, you can see the Jossler Village as well as Casa Presidio is one they're particularly proud of. That was a very um, uh, dilapidated apartment complex that the council member in the city of Tucson asked them to come in and work on um, and is now a, a thriving um, multifamily development uh, on Fort Lowell in the center of the city. Their Town West is committed to reimagining the Oro Valley Marketplace to create that vibrant place where both existing residents and newcomers can gather to work, play, shop, and live and stay and appreciate the beauty of the area. Go ahead. So the reason we're here, um, this is, we all know this is centrally located and where it is. It's 105 acres. It's established near Tangerine and right on Tangerine and Oracle Roads. Both roadways are, um, are built for this level of traffic and this project is anticipated this growth. The challenge is our current marketplace um, is, is really a challenge to all constituencies. So for the new owner, we all need it to be financially successful. For surrounding neighbors and new people in the community, uh, we want gathering places for connection, entertainment, retail, and living spaces. And for the town, we need to create community and economic su success to generate the construction sales tax, the bed tax, and the retail sales tax to fund the priorities for the community. So our goal is to create the spaces for that connection and entertainment, um, as well as additional living opportunities. Um, and we know there's a formula that works. Go ahead. The, um, uh, the, this is the challenge. We have, we, our shopping um, preferences have changed. The pandemic changed them even more. Um, but what we do know is we still want gathering places. We still want places that we wanna be and we want them to be lively and areas that are exciting to interact with the community. Go ahead. So the solution is the marketplace and it has all the infrastructure as I said before, go ahead. We've researched other successful reimagining projects in other cities and in this region. And what we've discovered, as I said, it's a lifestyle, entertainment, dining, special events, special spaces. There are two components that are not currently part of the Oro Valley marketplace that we want to be part of the Oro Valley Village Center. And that's the residential component, which is key to creating the synergy of people living on site um, and helping provide some diversity of housing um, as well in the, in the town of Oro Valley. And the hospitality, we encourage other people to come and stay and be part of the town and spend their money um, and create the tax revenue for the town. Go ahead. So here's what we know. This is all we've been planned for development. There's significant parking. As I said, Tangerine and Oracle are built to, to deal with this level of, of traffic. 
Um, and these are the areas that we call the liabilities that we need to turn into assets. These are blank um, uh, pads. And when I say pads, I mean graded areas for development. Um, and, and there's other vacant spots in the center as well as staff indicated. Uh, go ahead. So this is the concept plan. I'm gonna walk through a couple of key elements. So we're taking those liabilities, as I said, and turning them into assets. We have the two locations for the apartments, um, the potential for three hotels, um, and that center area, which is a man-made drainage area. We can still accommodate all of the drainage and even have some natural drainage areas incorporated, um, but really create an entertainment uh, lifestyle area and really breathe some, some life into this area. We can also tell you um, the owners have been sharing this vision um, with potential retailers and they're really excited um, about the ideas and um, you've seen some of the newer restaurants as well uh, come back into the space, which is, which is very exciting. Um, so I'm going to start with the uh, Oasis uh, Park, the center area, that, that uh, man-made drainage area. Go ahead to the next slide. We're really excited about this space. It really gives us an opportunity to take what is a man-made drainage area um, that really separates the site and create a spot for people to actually come together, cultural, social, entertainment, lifestyle, and open space. Um, where the different components include a versatile space for public events, art shows, um, areas where we can bring events that are actually already um, on the property and have a dedicated space for, for those areas with gazebos and shade and smaller gathering. In the middle area, you'll see the uh, entertainment and activity area. Uh, that's the hotel that Mr. Spaeth was alluding to where our, our concept is retail on the bottom and hotel on top um, to kind of interact with that center space playground, maybe a splash pad, sandy beach, um, and other areas, again, where people can, can interact uh, and be a, be, a part of, be a part of that area. And then the southern area is additional opening gathering space, um, more of an amenity for a cluster of restaurants, which you're seeing, um, and some, some space for community gathering and events in that area as well. Go ahead. And these will all be connected with pedestrian connectivity. Um, these are just inspiration boards, other places, um, both local and in the, in the, uh, in the state that are uh, the, where people are interacting and, and we've seen success of these kinds of spaces. Go ahead. And these are just examples of playground and you can see the idea for an ice rink and the um, tree lighting that already takes place on the property as well as we're right up against the loop connection, um, which was built as the part of the, the first phase of the Oro Valley Marketplace. So the idea of uh, bicycle support um, and coffee along the loop as well is something that we're, we're looking at and very excited about. Go ahead. These are just a couple of renderings that show how this conceptually, how this space, the building will not be orange, um, I promise. Um, this is just a, meant to be a concept plan for the kinds of amenities and, and spaces that can be here. Go ahead. This goes in a, just a little bit closer. So this is on the, this is as if you're standing sort of in the Walmart um, parking lot looking towards the movie theater and this would be in that space. Go ahead. And this is from the movie theater looking out. So it gives you a sense of you can come out from the movie and go over and and spend some time in, in, these, in these spaces. Go ahead. Uh, the hotel, um, as, as uh, Mr. Spaeth indicated, is meant to have sort of retail and other uses on the bottom floor for interaction with the public. And then um, the hotel on the top floors. And this, this is one of the hotels that we're requesting at the, at the 49 feet. Again, the existing height on the, in the PAD is 39 feet, but it does allow another 10 feet for architecture as well. So there are some of the buildings on the site right now that are at that 49 feet. Um, so we're just asking for the full 49 feet for occupancy. Um, go ahead. 
This just gives you an idea of using the architectural guidelines that already exist in Ore Valley Marketplace, what the hotel could look like um, for the project. Go ahead. Um, I'm gonna talk about the Tangerine um, Apartments next. Um, all right. So um, this is proposed for those of you who were at the March meeting. Um, you may remember this was shown as a garden style two and three story uh, building um, apartment complex. We were showing the Oracle site um, as the taller uh, building, which was anywhere from 63 uh, feet all the way up to we had some spots that were a little bit over 80 feet. In hearing the comments from the first um, neighborhood meeting and subsequent discussions with staff, the thought was that the, most of the neighbors who are to that who can see the site directly are to the west, and the view shed that's important is push is push ridge. Um, so we've um, flipped the the uh, apartment heights and doing the taller apartments over on Tangerine. Now, having said that, we have lowered the heights on both sites. I, I mean, on um, we've lowered the heights from what was proposed on Oracle. Um, so over on the Tangerine side, if you're in some of those residences that are looking to the north, uh, your view shed is of the Oro Valley Hospital, which is 75 feet tall on a higher on a higher elevation. So what we're doing, and we'll show you some pictures in a moment, is the um, keeping the height at the maximum height of 75 feet, and it's on a lower grade than the, than the Oro Valley Hospital across the street. So this is the how the site sort of lays out. Um, up on the top of the screen is Tangerine Road. You'll see there's a, there's a residential entrance only that's a right in, right out off of Tangerine. Um, if you come over to Water Harvest Way, you can come down and the main entrance is, uh, is off of Water Harvest Way with a very strong pedestrian connection over to the hotel on the other side, which we'll talk about in a minute. In a minute. The parking will all be under the building. So it will all be shaded parking uh, at ground level underneath the building. The southern edge is the loop uh, extension down in that area. Go ahead. So the second, third, and fourth level floor plans, you'll see the building is broken up. It's not a solid building all the way across. And there are some amenity spaces in these apartments that will make it feel like a, an apartment and a, and a home, but really also encourage folks to engage in the Ore Valley Village Center, the rest of the center, because that's what we want them to do. So there'll be a, a pool in this area, clubhouse, um, all shielded by the, the buildings. Go ahead. Um, and this gives you a sense of the fifth floor. Um, the height of this building, as I said, is a maximum 75 feet, but you'll see in a minute the roof um, modification so that it's not 75 feet straight across. Go ahead. Um, so this is a view from the southeast. You can see the loop uh, down in the corner, and you can see this incorporates the town or the uh, the uh, or a Valley Village Center or a Valley Marketplace architectural guidelines. Go ahead. And this is a view from the Southwest. For those of you who are in Catalina Shadows, when we did the focus group for Catalina Shadows, um, we did provide some visual, some modeled visuals from certain street sections, and that can be found on Aura Valley's website on the, the presentation uh, that was done for Catalina Shadows. Um, okay, go ahead. Um, talk about the Oracle Road apartments. And again, that's in location D. Uh, go ahead. So this is the area where we lowered the height and the intensity of these apartments. Again, for the view sheds to push ridge from the west. Um, it's approximately 229 units. It is four and five stories, again, on a lower elevation. Uh, context matters here. So Oracle Road is higher in this area, even at the lowest point. It's 10 feet. Oracle Road grade is 10 feet higher than the grade of the site. The nearest adjacent home to the west is 22 feet 
above this grade and over 1,700 feet away from the edge of the, of the actually the full village property line. And then this is even further to the, to the east. Um, the parking will be in the middle of this, of this project with the building around. Um, there will be some first floor uh, potential restaurant lobby and sales area. Go ahead. This is the second level. So you're seeing the second level of parking again in the middle. So both of these apartments will have the parking self-contained within the, within the buildings, within the project. Go ahead. You'll see on the third floor, um, the, uh, we have the internally the pool courtyard uh, clubhouse area with all of the, the building kind of surrounding it. Go ahead. So the um, four-story area, um, the roof line ranges from between 43 and 49 feet. So it is um, still within the heights that we're requesting as well for the hotel. There is a five-story component that in our proposed um, amendment can be, uh, cannot be more than 50% of the height. And that can go up to 59 feet um, to get that fifth story element. Um, this adds to the architectural variation and we've lowered the height even at the highest point by um, over 20 feet from what we were proposing back in, in March of um, 2020. Go ahead. These are just showing you uh, again, the how the architectural guidelines can be applied. This is the four story component. You can see the variation in height. Um, the center courtyard is in the middle, so it will be protected from noise and, and other, um, other external issues. Um, and it's, again, designed to meet the guidelines. Go ahead. This gives you an idea of what the internal courtyard area could be like with the residential around it and the clubhouse. Go ahead. The, um, this is kind of the view from the northwest, and this is what the five-story component um, could look like. Go ahead. This gives you just an idea of the inspiration from other communities. We have heard from a lot of employers in the area that this kind of um, condo style apartment living is something that is really um, needed um, for to attract employees. Um, it, it blends the apartments, the village and the community space and hospitality and um, as we, we've heard um, since the pandemic, employees are starting to drive um, locations uh, for businesses, um, especially in a day where you don't have to physically be in the office, but you want to be nearby. Um, so creating places where we can attract that uh, younger generation and the employees is going to be critically important. Go ahead. So I'm going to focus now on the hotels. There's a Tangerine Hotel, which is letter B on this, um, and then the Oracle Hotel, which we're showing as letter E, but it, there is an alternate location, which can be letter F on here. Go ahead. Hospitality is great to add because it also means we have guests coming in and spending their money and adding to the tax revenue. We are, I mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again, creating pedestrian connectivity from all of the hotels and within the center. Um, and that's gonna be important. We obviously have the loop that connects, um, but we also wanna provide those connections within the center to make it easier for people to interact. So the Tangerine Hotel is um, ideas over on the north, I'm sorry, on the left-hand side, um, 150 rooms and you'll see the parking is available on the site. The Oracle uh, Hotel is about 112 rooms and also um, parking on the site. Both of these hotels, as I said, we'll, we'll, um, we're requesting the 49 foot height for the hotels. Uh, go ahead. These are the kinds of uh, buildings that are sort of the inspiration. Go ahead. And then incorporating the guidelines from the Oro Valley Marketplace, um, this is the kind of design potential. This is the Tangerine Hotel, go ahead. And this is the Oracle Hotel. Okay, go ahead. 
the next. So in order to achieve this vision, um, I'm not gonna read it to you. I'm confident you all can read the screen. Um, that in order to achieve this vision, um, there are really, there are several approvals required. Mr. Spaeth already went through those. The PAD amendment um, for the height for the hotels at the 49 feet, similar to the old Dick's Sporting Goods that is at that 49 feet. Apartments, um, maximum 75 feet on the Tangerine, um, which is no higher than Oro Valley Hospital. On the Oracle side, um, mostly four stories, 49 feet. Um, with the ability to do um, less than half at the 59 feet or five stories. Um, there's some buffer yard requests as well as Mr. Spaeth indicated, um, permitting the apartments and the, uh, the hotel um, as uses on the site. The environmentally sensitive lands ordinance amendment is to acknowledge that center recreation area is man-made and not a natural area. We can still accomplish all of the drainage and make that a connection space for this um, lifestyle center rather than a separation. And we'll also be revising the conceptual site plan, um, the conceptual architecture, and um, there may be some signage uh, updates to reflect updated concepts, but that will probably come into the future. We really um, have enjoyed re-engaging um, during the month of August with the community, are excited about uh, breathing life into this space, as we all come out of a, of a pandemic and want to be with one another and um, happy to turn it back over to Mr. Spaeth and be available for any questions. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Sylvan. Uh, before we get started uh, with your questions and comments, I'd like to uh, describe how you can all participate during this meeting. To ask a question or make a comment, please raise your hand. There are two ways to do this. For those participating via phone, press star nine to raise your hand. Please note, you may need to unmute yourself by pressing star six and use the passcode 159651 as shown in the top, hand, uh, top right hand corner of this slide. For those participating on the Zoom app or website, find the participants icon Click it to open a dialog box where you will see an option to raise your hand as shown on the bottom right hand side of this slide. Raised hands will be moved to the top of the list in the order in which they are raised. When it is your turn, please make sure you are not muted on your personal device and that your video is on by using the microphone and video icon shown on this slide. When I announce who is up to speak, I will also announce the next person whose turn it will be to speak, so that person will be prepared. Again, if you are having any technical issues with Zoom or have any further questions about my Zoom participation instructions, please contact Ms. Malini Sims anytime during the meeting at 520-229-4836 to request further assistance. We are going to do our best to get through everyone's questions and comments. Please keep your input to no longer than three minutes out of fairness to all participants who wish to be heard. I will respectfully remind folks of this guideline as needed, as the goal of this meeting is to have a productive conversation about the project and provide constructive feedback. Please keep that in mind as we move through the meeting tonight. So with that, uh, we'll go ahead and get started with your questions and comments. Please bear with me as it may take a moment to unmute folks and move between our speakers. And I will apologize in advance if I butcher anybody's name. I'm doing my best. Looks like uh, Gary Temple is the first one up with your hand. Uh, I don't have a second one yet, so I won't announce who that is, but Gary, go right ahead and unmute on your end. And would you like your video turned on? No. Okay, we can hear you, go right ahead. Okay, thank you, Mike. I uh, appreciate it. I missed the first go around, so uh, my apologies. My question centers around the apartments. Has there been any thought given, because I think the city, from my perspective, has plenty of ample apartment capacity as we speak, but I was thinking, is one of those complexes doable to the condominium? type of arrangement? Uh, I will defer that to Ms. Sylvan. Please go right ahead. And if I can fill in any gaps if necessary. 
Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Spaeth, I'll let you address the need for apartments because I know the town did a study. Um, the question about the, the condominium, um, when we get ready to build, there's a very different building code that's required when you do condominium style um, or condominium to be able to divide them up. The current plan is not to do that, um, but they're intended to be, while they're intended to be rentals, they are intended to be the condo style development. So that might change as we, as we proceed, um, but right now they're intended to be apartments, kind of the condo style of, of living. Um, Mr. Spaeth, I'll let you answer the. Sure, yep, absolutely. Thank you, uh, Ms. Sylvan. So yes, to the first part of your question, Mr. Temple, well, the town did recently um, conduct an apartment study as part of a broader housing study that is being conducted throughout the town. And um, that information has actually provided that the majority, if not all of the apartment complexes in town, whether they be new ones or older complexes and developments are, are very close to at capacity. There's a very small vacancy rate, um, regardless of which age of the development. Um, so there definitely is a demand. Oro Valley um, continues, we've found through that study, continues to demand higher rents um, in those apartments as well, which is indicative of the demand um, being high for those places. And uh, if you'd like more information on this project's webpage, we have actually um, uploaded that apartment study um, for folks to go take a look at. and. Um, seek out more information on the apartment question. But yes, it, there is a demand in Oro Valley. Does that answer your question, Mr. Temple? Yes, it does. Thank you, Mike. Sure. Yep. Thank you. All right. Got a couple more. Now we've got um, Kelly Pena and Linda Klotzer is on deck. So Kelly, you shouldn't, it looks like your video is on. So go right ahead. Hi. I was wondering if a crime forecast has been done. Do we expect any increase with people who may um, just be staying here temporarily? Sure. Yep. And actually I can um, address that as well. So that was also a part of um, the apartment study because we did frequently hear that question or comment and actually per unit on a per unit basis, apartments have um, apartments contribute less to crime than single family home developments do throughout the town. Um, so that was definitely something we focused on. And again, um, with those, with the high rents that the town continues to see in apartment complexes, um, obviously that can impact some of the folks that think about moving up in this area, but affordability is also a question as we know, we've heard that several times as well. So, so no, it does not increase crime. Does that answer your question? Okay, thank you. I see you nodding your head. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so Linda Klotzer, sorry if I butchered that, you are up and then Penny Renton Meyer is on deck. So Linda, go ahead and unmute your, would you like your video turned on? No. no. Okay. Hi, this isn't Linda. I'm actually sitting with Linda. My name is Sharon Brining. Okay, and, hi Sharon. Um, I, I don't know so much that I have a question as I mostly have a comment. Um, and it, it has to do primarily with the apartments. Um, I have I did not attend the last meeting, but I attended the previous meetings from last year. And um, a couple of my neighbors and I uh, had taken up um, a petition in our, our neighborhood and um, the adjacent neighborhood to us. And this was during, right in the middle of COVID. So we were very limited as far as being able to talk to people, but we submitted over 75 signatures. A lot of people do not, are not happy about the, the possibility of having all of these apartments and these apartment units um, as part of this. A high density population apartment complexes are really not very popular with the people that live in this area. And, you know, I, I know different people that have brought it, that you know, you've had previous people on here that had brought up the, the idea of, um, of these apartments with not, there's no additional crime. And they, we were also told at one of the previous meetings last year that there wouldn't be any 
problem with traffic, the high density traffic could be, you know, uh, adjudicated. The reality of it is that you can't guarantee that the crime will increase and the traffic will increase. And that's just a fact. So, you know, to say that that's not an issue or it won't be an issue, we're already having a problem with the La and Cantata apartments across Oracle right now, just trying to get out onto Oracle. I mean, you know, in the morning between the, the Oasis School and the La and Cantata apartments, it's terrible. You People take their lives in their hands trying to get out of our neighborhood. So, you know, it, these are things that people are concerned about. And, and I submitted to the city council over 75 signatures, which we could have tripled that had it not been for COVID. And I just wanted to make that comment because, you know, this isn't something that people want. You, you guys are really pushing this apartment thing. And I think it's just, it's, they need to go somewhere else, not, not, not down here by the marketplace. You wanna bring in, you know, a hotel, that's fine. But not all of these apartments, it's just, it, it's not gonna bring revenue to the city because um, at least initially maybe, but not after that, you know, I've been here long enough to remember when the apartments along Ina Road were considered luxury apartments. Well, they're not luxury apartments anymore down there. So I'm just wanted to make my comment. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much. And, and I, I didn't mention it tonight, but we did mention it during the um, focus area meeting for Rams Pass and Rams Canyon. That uh, petition we do have, and it is in the, um, the project folder that will be forwarded to the, both the planning and zoning commission and town council. So I want you to know, rest assured, we, we absolutely receive that and we'll be forwarding that along as well, for sure. Okay. Uh, Penny Rittenmeyer and then Roxanne is on deck. So Penny, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Would you like your video turned on? Let's see if we can get the video turned on, I guess. There we go. Hi, Penny. Are you there? Uh, yes. Can you hear us? We can hear you. Yep. Would you like your video turned on? Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, okay. This is Carl Redmeyer, and uh, I represent the Talente Estates landowners, and we're opposed to the apartments. We don't want to see them built. Okay. Clearly, we just don't want them. Uh, we echo the same issues brought up before between traffic, congestion, crimes, your own traffic study. Um, is saying there'll be 28,000 trips a day generated by this. Currently, you said there were 51,000 trips on the road. So that's a 60% increase in traffic by your own study. Okay, um, I would defer on that one to Mr. Kiesler. Our town engineer is here. Um, so Mr. Kiesler, did you wanna jump in on traffic and kind of paint the broad strokes for everybody? Mr. Smith, I sure would. Thank you. Yep, go right ahead. We can hear you, Paul. Okay, great. So, um, well, there will be, you will experience a traffic increase uh, primarily because the, um, uh, the traffic that is um, coming out of the marketplace is less than what was already designed for. So the marketplace was was designed for a, a certain a particular traffic volume. It's not been released or realized because not all the stores have been filled in, but all the improvements to, to uh, include or to manage that traffic have already been built. Uh, this particular project exhibits the same traffic characteristics as the original marketplace as it stands today, um, had it been fully built out. And there was one difference and that difference was in the morning, the morning peak, uh, the morning rush hour, where you'll see about a 5% increase over what's already been entitled. So if you wanna talk traffic volumes, um, really you wanna look at your hourly volume. So the hourly volume for um, Oracle Road in this location is approximately um, 3,400 cars. Per hour. 
Um, this particular development is creating uh, in the peak hour um, roughly 888, which is more than what's in the peak hour right now. Um, that's the difference. The PM peak hour is a little bit higher uh, because again, a lot of people are going in and out of the center. Um, but Oracle Road is much denser and carries a lot more traffic to the south. Uh, presently, we don't have a, uh, um, a recent uh, counting because um, the counting done in 2020 during the pandemic was low. So we've been using the 2019 to understand the traffic. And on Oracle Road today, it's uh, approximately 33,000 cars, 33,500 cars, 1,000 uh, per day. Um, the total traffic on this will be um, distributed. Probably about 60% of it will go down Oracle. The other 40% will be going down Tangerine. Um, like I said, the, the road, the lights, the entrances in and out of this development have all been designed for this volume of traffic. Um, Oracle Road does have a growth uh, with regard to traffic as time moves on and that's uh, expected. I don't know if there's anything else I could add, Mr. Spade. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Keesler and, and uh, Ms. Silva, now that we've heard the comment a couple of times, is there anything that you'd like to add um, regarding the apartments and whether or not there's a demand for it and anything associated with that? Sure. I, I mean, the um, couple, a couple of comments. Um, there is a police substation already, and it will continue. That's actually on the property at the Oro Valley um, uh, Village Center, Oro Valley Marketplace. Um, and uh, we listened in on the discussions about the apartment study that the town did, along with the the police department report. And a lot of what they talked about was how carefully and, and diligently the police department is able to work with um, apartment management, um, which is why they can really do a better job um, in controlling kind of crime and other issues. These are, again, condo style um, apartments um, that really we're, we're hearing from a number of people are, are really the, the future for the employment growth that the town is wants to attract and kind of the, the quality of life. This is an area that already has the, the infrastructure as Mr. Kiesler indicated, Tangerine and Oracle um, were planned for, for growth. Um, and this is an area where we already have the, the graded land and the ability to to put those. So I know there's there's always concerned, concerns that I don't particularly understand, but I hear a lot about the, the people who live in apartments. I know if I reflect back, I was an apartment dweller at one point in my life. I think we probably all were. Um, and um, it's simply a, a, a choice that people are making nowadays where they don't want to own property. Um, and the employment, I want to just add one more thing. There's a lot of employment that the town of Oro Valley is trying to attract and that, um, that there's a lot of people who come temporarily um, to locations. And that could be one or two years, but it's still temporary and they aren't going to buy a house, um, but they want these kinds of higher end living spaces. We're seeing it in Scottsdale and a number of other, a number of other locations. So this is, this is the kind of space that we're trying to create um, on the, in, the, um, in the Oro Valley Village Center. And again, the, the report kind of speaks for itself on demand. Um, and we see that demand only going up as Oro Valley um, creates more employment opportunities. So Carl, or thank you, Ms. Sylvan. Um, Carl or Penny, did that answer your question or did you have other comments you'd like to provide? Well, uh, not really because I, I understand that the uh, original development had a traffic study done, but it was never finished. And so when I look at the report that was generated, I see somewhere around uh, a 50% increase in the number of trips a day based on your study when it's finished. And I don't see how you, you can say that's not going to impact the people surrounding this thing. It's in your study. Okay, 28,000 trips a day. I mean, come on, guys, you, you in your own presentation, you said 51,000 cars a day and you're going to add 28,000. 
you cannot ignore what you've published. I apologize. I, I don't know what report you're specifically referring to, but what I might recommend, um, if you've got more in-depth you know, questions that it sounds like you have, um, you might reach out to us and we can certainly um, get you in touch with Mr. Keesler and, and maybe have... Um, I'd, I'd like to talk to him because it's, it's in black and Sure. I know he'd be more than happy to, to meet with you and kind of go through some of that information. So if you want to email... Um, ask at oralvalleyaz.gov and provide your information and just um, reference this conversation. We'll make sure that we uh, get you two connected. Yeah, and one more time, I will reiterate for landowners and Talanti Estates, we don't want the apartments here. Okay. Thank you. I've been down in Tucson. One well, in Tucson is because of all the apartments and the crime. You'll bring it up here. And, and but uh, just go drive down today and then tell me that uh, what I'm saying is true. We'll be happy to meet with you, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Up next is Roxanne, and then on deck is Rosa Daly. And I've been um, informed that for some folks, depending on how you're um, accessing the meeting tonight, if you don't see the raise hand button, you may have to click on reactions to pop up the raise your hand option. So if you've been searching for it and couldn't find it, try that. And by all means, if you have trouble signing in tonight, you can always email any of your questions or comments to that ask at orovalleyaz.gov. Um, and we'd be happy to, to respond to those as well. So uh, Roxanne, go right ahead and unmute yourself. And would you like your video turned on? No, thanks. Okay, we can hear you, go right ahead. Okay. I live over here in Catalina Shadows. This is my first time I'm joining the meeting. I'm a busy mom of a special needs son and um, my son's bedroom actually faces that area where the apartments are gonna be. And the wash that's right next to me has always been really loud from just the Oral Valley Hospital. When the ambulances go by, it just comes through the wash and it just landscapes my house and my son gets up several times a night. I'm in fear that this traffic and the apartments is gonna cause more noise. And I'm, we're just gonna have more of an issue of keeping my son asleep in bed. So this is affecting the community. Okay, thank you for the comment. Ms. Uh, Sylvan, did you have any comment? Yeah, a couple of things. Um, we are working with the town, um, particularly in the entertainment district to do um, a noise study. One of the things that I'll point out is that um, part of the benefit of, of buildings are they, they are a block for noise. I mean, obviously the building can't generate noise as well. Right. Um, so I, I'm not, you know, we, we need to be careful that we manage um, mm -hmm. these condo style apartments well. But the um, any of the, the the taller building blocking the roadway um, does provide some noise barrier, um, and we can talk to the um, the consultant who's doing the noise analysis about that. And um, I'd be happy uh, whether it's through staff or if you um, I think my contact information is on the website as well. I'm not sure, but staff mm -hmm. can put you in contact with me too about the the visuals as well that we provided during the Catalina Shadows um, uh, targeted or focus group um, meeting um, to help because we may, depending on where exactly you are, we may have provided um, a visual that would help with that. But we understand the, the noise um, concerns and we certainly, and one of the benefits too of putting people physically living on the site is that it, it creates almost an internal control um, because with people living there, they're going to want a quality of life similar to what um, everybody external wants as well. And so there's, there's um, self-policing, so to say, that, that goes on on sites like these um, that have been redeveloped with the, resident, the higher end residential in those areas. But we hear the concern, for sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Sylvan. Does that, uh, any other co questions or comments, Roxanne? 
No, that's that just was my only concern because like I said, it's just it does get noisy like through this wash area. So that was just my concern for my son to be able to have, you know, quality sleep. Absolutely. Mr. Mr. Spade. Yes, Mr. Kiesler. Well, uh, with uh, with uh, this uh, residence question and the resident actually before, um, one of the one of the figures that I do not have at my or facts I do not have at my fingertips is how many truck cars are being um, generated today. So what we will do, we will work on that answer. So that there's a good comparison um, to understand what the um, what the present traffic generation is, and as the the just recent um, uh, resident just commented on of an expected, what they what to expect to see if this development builds out completely with the new uh, proposed um, uses. So what we wanna do is, is, is be able to at least have everybody have a very, very clear picture. I know uh, the gentleman before who said, well, we're adding 28,000 cars per day more. That's not entirely correct. There's a certain percentage of cars that are already being added from the marketplace today as it stands. And, I do, and, and again, I do not know what that number is, but um, I've put a request into uh, Ms. Sylvan to go ahead and get that answer generated. So again, we can paint a very clear picture for everybody. Um, again, it's underdeveloped, so it doesn't real up. The real traffic generation is not fully realized. So, but we do wanna make sure that the, the, um, everybody who's, who's interested in this project has that full assessment. Okay. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Kiesler. Uh, Rosa Daly is up, and then on deck we have Rob Wanchek. Wanchek? Again, apologize if I butchered that. So Rosa, go ahead. Did you like your video turned on? Uh, no, thank you. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Go right ahead. Hi, I'm Rosa Daly. I'm an Oro Valley, Rancho Vistosa, Oro Valley resident for 15 years. Um, I do not live near this um, development, but um, I do have some questions and comments. Um, they, they're kind of interrelated. My, my major question kind of concern is the revisions to the Rancho Vistoso PAD uh, for these um, uh, apartment complexes and um, specifically the building heights. So my question would be that if the amendment is made to the Rancho Vistoso PAD for this project, would that then be the new building heights that we could expect from any um, C2 uh, property owner or would it affect C1? I mean, I have some general questions about that, but I'd like some specific answers. Is this going forward going to affect um, our, our, uh, um, uh, our quality of life in Rancho Vistoso? Because one of the things that the Rancho Vistoso PAD does quite well is it uses words to describe an experience we all experience Rancho Vistoso as a low profile, uh, high view corridor community. So that's question concern number one. And uh, my second um, question com uh, concern is, I use three areas of marketplace pretty regularly. Um, I'll say pre-COVID, you know, uh, probably more so than, than now the movie theater. Um, I, I like Chard Pie Restaurant. I think it's a high quality restaurant, which is hard to find anywhere in uh, Oro Valley. And, um, and I, 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 you, my hairdresser just moved there. And how, how easy is it for me to, as not living in the apartments uh, or, or being in the hotel to, to then navigate this area with what you plan to put here? There are a lot of apartment units. And um, you know, they're, they're, that will definitely increase the usage of, of the things that are successful there now, but not only successful as businesses, but successful for the, for the greater Oro Valley community that might want to use them. So that's my, these are my general comments and questions. And the PAD one is, is the most um, significant one. Um, and then I just like to close by saying that, you know, I, I believe that these apartments are, aggre are, are aggressive. I mean, I get that you wanted to put some apartments there in the beginning. I think there were a couple stories, garden apartments, but these are very aggressive. Um, I, I would describe them as a colossus. 
um, and they will impede not just the views of the people who live in that neighborhood and those neighborhoods that have been speaking, but the people who drive along the um, Tangerine Road in Oracle. And you know, we paid something like more than $2 million of taxpayer money to bury the, 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 um, the utility pole, the lines you know, along the Oracle and Tangerine because they were supposed to be view corridors. And I, it just seems to me like this is um, uh, taking a step back from that um, mentality. So that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you very much for your questions. And I'll answer the first one regarding the PAD and then I can hand it over to Ms. To Ms. Sylvan to discuss the other um, questions and comments that you made. So um, I like that you referenced that Rancho Vistoso does a great job using words to describe um, what the vision is for the community. And um, one of the unique things about Rancho Vistoso is that um, unlike in other portions of town, the Rancho Vistoso PAD has individual neighborhood policies. Um, the overall Rancho Vistoso PAD itself is broken up into I believe it's 11 or 12 um, neighborhoods. And so the Oro Valley Marketplace is a neighborhood unto itself. It's the only development within neighborhood four of Rancho Vistoso. So the applicant's proposals for building height increases would only apply in neighborhood four for the Oro Valley market. So um, that was a very astute question on your part. And other parts of town that, that would be a question to, to wonder about. In this case, it is site specific just to the market. So I hope that answers your question. And then Ms. Sylvan, I can turn it over to you uh, regarding the other two comments and questions that Ms. Dale. Sure. So um, very good questions. And Mr. Spade, thank you for answering the, the first one. Um, again, this is in neighborhood four and it's very specific too. This is one of the only commercial areas and mixed use areas um, for the project. And um, we're actually working with staff to tie these heights to these specific areas within uh, neighborhood four as well. So in addition to it only applying in neighborhood four, um, our conceptual site plan will tie it to these particular um, lots. Um, as to the, you know, bringing more people um, into, in, into, onto the property, one of, the, one of our key goals was to provide all of the parking for the two apartment complexes as well um, within, as I showed you before, and the tangerine that's underneath and in the, um, on the Oracle one, it's within the building. And in large part, that's so that people who live there can come and park their cars. And then if they wanna go to the movie theater, um, if they want to um, head over to their favorite restaurants or um, frequent the, any of the other users that we're going to be, uh, we're going to make sure there's strong pedestrian connections so they won't be competing for the parking spaces and the other things from the rest of the, of the community. And that parking is, is really critical, I think, to that, that concern. Um, the only other thing I would point out is that um, from the roadways, both Tangerine and Oracle Road are elevated, um, sometimes significantly in these areas. So the, the entire Ore Valley Marketplace is actually down a little bit lower, which helps. And again, the primary view shed is gonna be um, from, the, from the west. Um, and um, the heights that we're proposing in the areas that we are proposing uh, are, are in areas where we're really working to mitigate, mitigate the view shed um, concerns. We understand and we've heard, I've been doing work in Oro Valley for over 20 years and there's always a concern about apartments. Um, what we're seeing now is that the folks who are interested in having apartments, especially the condo style, are young professionals. There are older um, folks who have decided that they don't want to take care of a yard, take care of a, take care of a house, um, and they want to live near their employment, which is becoming even more, even more um, interesting or they don't care that they're living near their employment, they may actually be working from home. So there is a lot of um, people shifting from kind of the, the thinking of owning property to renting um, and a, a somewhat transient and professional employment population as well. Um, and we're hearing that from the employers. So we're, um, again, these are, these are condo style apartments. Um, and um, we're, um, we, we're, we're hoping, we're designing 
to the kinds of concerns and view sheds that were that we've been hearing from the community. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sylvan. Ms. Daly, did that answer your questions? Um, somewhat. I'm, I'm still concerned about the scope, the number, the sheer number of apartments being proposed. I understand about the condo style and mm -hmm. it's just the scope of this project just seems so out of place with Aura Valley in general, but Rancho Vistoso especially. So, and I know that, you know, even your your drawings um, kind of depict that and your view shed analysis and view preservation plan does a really nice job of showing me what it will look like from driving down Oracle Road, Tangerine Road. And, and these buildings do come up out of the, you know, the, the, the recessed area that you, you spoke about and they do affect um, your, you know, overall view carters as a, just a, a commuter, a person driving up and down the road. It's one of the things I enjoy the most about living here is that you can see the mountains. I'm, I'm horrible at navigation, but if I can just see the mountains, I know where I'm going. I really don't want to see an apartment building, you know, jutting up out of the ground, um, you know, between, um, you know, Tangerine Road and, and Oracle Road. And I know that others feel the same way. They may not know it now, but if you build it, they will not be happy. Um, so I'm just expressing how I feel about the project. I think the scope is too large, too too aggressive, and too tall. So thank you very much. Yep. Yeah, Go I ahead. just, um, Mr. Spade, if I can, because I forgot to address the sure. the number. So the the number of apartments actually hasn't changed much from 2020. Just the the flipping of where the apartments are, which sites, and the the it's a it's always been around 700. Um, apartment units on the on the site, and um, our, this is what we've heard from the retailers and the kinds of spaces that people people who want to be um, on the site is that this is the kind of density that really makes this kind of reimagining work. So we hear the concerns. Um, we hear the concerns about the height, and we're we're hoping we're going to work to address those. Go ahead, Mr. Okay, Spade, sorry. thank you, Ms. Silman. And yeah, we've got about twenty minutes left here of our scheduled time, so I'm going to try and move us along here. So we've got Rob W. I'm just going to do that so I don't butcher it for you again. And then on deck is Woody. So Rob, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Would you like your video turned on? Uh, no. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Go right ahead. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, I just want to uh, just to throw my support towards this development. You know, I think, um, I mean, people are bringing up a lot of a lot of points and I think the developer ought to do their best to try to, uh, you know, mitigate some of the concerns with respect to building heights, views and, and parking. But, you know, my my view on this is that this is this is really uh, an amazing thing for Oro Valley. You know, in 2006, no one anticipated the uh, or in 2000, no one no one anticipated the Great Recession in 2008. You know, no one, no one anticipated when this was a when this a development, the Oro Valley Marketplace was envisioned. No one anticipated, uh, you know, Amazon and the impact it was going to have and have on retail. You know, no one anticipated COVID. Uh, no one anticipated the worker shortage and housing shortage that we're going through now. Um, you know, we need to adjust. I think we need to adjust to this new normal. You know, if Oro Valley plans to have a future. Uh, with uh, fun and revenue generating lifestyle. So, um, you know, to me, the impacts are minimal. I mean, I, I live in Oro Valley. Uh, I don't live in the area. I, you know, travel the area a lot. Uh, travel down, War down uh, Oracle Road. There's no blocking of the mountains down Oracle Road. Traveling down Tangerine, there's no blocking of the mountains on Tangerine. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure that, um, you know, at least from my standpoint, the issues are, are really that, that great. So uh, my only, my, I do have one question though. <laughs> it's kind of probably trivial, but uh, this, this kind of reminds me a little bit of St. Philip's Plaza um, over there on Campbell and Sunrise, where you have the restaurants, you have a hotel and you have apartments and you have retail and business. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a, a bigger version of St. Philip's Plaza. 
Um, my, my question is, is what you keep mentioning entertainment. And my question is, is what kind of entertainment is envisioned? I mean, adult, let's, let's put it this way, adult entertainment. You know, I see the splash pads, I see the parks and the recreation equipment and stuff like that. But what, what, what's envisioned in terms of adult entertainment? Is there going to be like a little area for uh, live music? Um, you know, is there a, like a small amphitheater envisioned at all for, you know, performances, um, you know, things like that? Okay, yep. great. Thank you very much. Ms. Sylvan? Yeah. So um, thank you for the for the question. Um, the um, that the um, I don't know if you remember the map of kind of the entertainment area. When we say entertainment, what we're talking about is kind of community entertainment too. Not necessarily a sit and watch something, but there will certainly be some opportunities. The idea is to have a a kind of grassy area where people can congregate, maybe have um, some sort of entertainment. Um, in that I'm using the same word to define the word, which my mother, who's an English major, would hate. Um, there's um, in that restaurant cluster, we're talking about some opportunities for kind of a beer garden. There may be some live music. Obviously, we need to, we need to temper that with noise controls um, to make sure that we aren't creating any issues. Um, we've talked about some festivals, you know, whether it's art festivals um, that people can come to. Um, I, I don't know if you saw that picture of kind of the, the, and they've done this in downtown Tucson over the holidays prior to COVID, which is to do a, an ice rink, um, a temporary ice rink um, around the holidays um, where people can, can come, adults can also put on um, ice skates. Um, so looking for a combination of the, of the kid friendly um, as well as the, the adult and tempering it kind of with with noise regulation. So we clearly don't have it programmed yet, but spaces that give that opportunity. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Mm -hmm. Sylvan. Um, Woodings is up next and then on deck is David Barlow. So Woodings, please go right ahead. Looks like your video is already on. Yeah, yeah good evening. So we uh, live in the Catalina Shadows subdivision. And so just my first question would be, what drove the initial change in the apartment buildings to the, the one on Oracle Road to reduce that, basically swap the, the height and the you know, size of, this, of the you know, capacity of it with the one on Tangerine? So a lot of, uh, sorry, Mr. Spaeth, you oh, want yeah, me to please, jump in? Right <laughs> yep. um, uh, thank you for the question. Um, a lot of what drove it was the information that we got out of the first meeting um, in March of 2020 and the sense that the when you're in Catalina Shadows and you're thinking about view sheds, so what are you looking at? Folks are generally looking at Push Ridge um, and the Oracle Apartments are in that area um, near Push Ridge. If you're looking over to the, to the north, um, what you're looking at right now is a vacant piece of property and then Oro Valley Hospital, which is already 75 feet tall. So when we're talking about creating opportunities um, for um, this kind of living environment, um, some of which um, we want to create the podium style, like I said, or condo style apartments, um, focusing on where the primary view sheds are, where people are, are looking at the landscape in the in the um, in the background, um, or not so background as the case may be, um, that really blocking um, or, or potentially obscuring even the lower portion of Push Ridge um, was more offensive to folks than, than obscuring a uh, hospital on the other side of Tangerine. So that's a large, a large part of what drove that. And then we, like I said, we lowered, um, lowered Oracle, but we also, when we shifted it over to Tangerine, we lowered it from what we were proposing at Oracle as well to align it with the hospital. Okay, I understand that. So basically I have more feedback from people on that side. We happen to live on the, the north side. So most of our view is the hospital. Um, and we did look at the pictures, you know, that you generated and, showing what it would look like from our view, which happened to be one of those on our street and we're on the end. The only concern is where you took the picture was there's trees there blocking it. We actually live up above that where the houses are all elevated above the street level in that area. So we actually get a much 
bigger view of the structure. And uh, the other day we walked over to the next street over Meteor Place and there's no, there's no trees at the end there that's completely open and those people have just a view and their entire view is gonna be that apartment building. So just speaking for them, I don't think that they're gonna be happy with that. And all the neighbors we've talked to here are, are not happy with just the size of the structure as was depicted um, earlier being colossal. I think that's a good way to describe it because it's going to dwarf the hospital in that area from our view. Um, it is closer. It's not, the elevation is not much lower. I mean, from, you know, that dirt pad, it will be, uh, that is the only thing that's going to be visible in that area. So, so that's our real concern. And that was the, shared by all of our neighbors also. I don't know if you're hearing from them, but that, that was what we were told. So I don't believe you guys are actually going to do anything about that, but have you considered putting the parking underground to lower one floor? You know, it sounded like what you said was that it was, the parking was on the, on the bottom, but it was ground level. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to actually put it parking underground so you can lower one story without impacting what you say you need to have for the business case? Um, I don't know, Paul or um, David Little, I think maybe on or Rob Longacre want to talk about the soils and the inability to go underground in Caliche, or if you want me to touch that. Um, it, it's really difficult in generally in the Tucson area to go underground um, because of the, of the soils um, and the rock and it's, it's really expensive. So um, we have not explored that. We're, we're hearing what you're saying um, on, the, on the heights. And um, just really quickly, one of the reasons we took the pictures from where we did was because we were trying to take them from public rights of way. We weren't going to trespass into other people's backyards. Um, the next street but, was just public yeah, also. And we were trying to do kind of the closest street. So there certainly were some judgment calls. Um, we know we, anytime we do that, um, we get criticized for it. So it's fine. Um, but we can certainly, you know, work with you if you want to reach out to staff and and figure out some other locations if we if we need to. But we, well, that we was are, like right at our house, so I, I mean, I get the view, but um, there was worse places that I guess would uh, make it look worse from the apartment size perspective, right? So you pick the area that would portray it in its best light. Okay. Thank you. Anything Thank else? You. What things we're going to have to. Keep moving no, on for the ahead. sake of other folks. Okay, thank you. Uh, David Barlow is up, and then Kelly Penna is on deck. So, David, go right ahead and uh, unmute yourself. And would you like your video turned on? No, thank you. Okay, we can hear you. Go right ahead. Hi, good evening. Um, just two quick questions. Uh, one is for Mr. Kiesler. Uh, regarding traffic flow on Oracle, uh, what is this development doing uh, to work with the state to maintain Oracle in that neck of the woods. If you're developing this as a destination in Oro Valley, Oracle is not a really welcoming way to get there at this point in time. Um, you know, maybe this is a discussion to have with the state. I don't know, but I would imagine that um, the developers would have some input into how Oracle Road is maintained to get to this destination. Um, secondly, uh, this one is directed to Ms. Sylvan. Uh, if, if the push is for uh, condo style living in this area, why not make them condos? Uh, I would think that would incite investors as a sense of community to, you know, uh, rather than a renter, I think condo owners would be a little bit more involved in the community. Um, that's kind of pretty much all I have to say. Okay, thank you very much, David. So uh, Mr. Kiesler, we're gonna chime you up first to answer the first question, then we'll go to Ms. Silva. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spade. So, um, yeah, so uh, I agree with you um, with regard to the condition of Oracle Road, and so does the state, actually. Uh, so the work that we've been doing from um, Calle Concordia down south 
uh, the state is already um, working on those plans to go from Calle Concordia up to Tangerine. So the state is gonna resurface the road um, all the way up through. Um, then through the pandemic, of course, we've had uh, our struggles with regard to uh, vegetative maintenance, but we're actually, the town of Oro Valley is going through all of the uh, medians and we're gonna be de-weeding all of that. So hopefully um, we're gonna have a good looking Oracle Road shortly, far ahead of what this development will be uh, because the, uh, the work that Oro Valley will be doing is in the next couple of weeks. And then um, the rehabilitation of the pavement is gonna, is gonna be um, going out to bid this winter and hopefully for start of construction um, this coming summer. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Mr. Kiesler, Ms. Sylvan. And we've only got about 10 minutes left, so we're gonna have to pick up the pace a little bit. Ms. Sylvan. Sure, I've got a quick answer. So the, the market for financing condominiums as an initial development strategy is not established in the town of Oro Valley. So the idea here is to create the condo style apartments and build them so that they can be um, sold at a later date when, the, when that market appears. But it's not there right now, and so the financing is not available. So there'll be rental at first, but again, designed and developed um, to ultimately be sold if that market um, if that market appears in our valley. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sylvan. So um, Kelly Pema is up, and then we got our first phone user uh, with the phone number ending in four five five four. So Kelly, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, I have two questions. I live in Rams Canyon, and I believe I read in an earlier report that um, some people expressed um, wanting a traffic light. Um, has that been decided? Uh, you know, yes. I know Mr. Kiesler can chime in on that. I sure can. So we've been studying uh, that intersection for quite some time. Mm -hmm. I, I personally would like to get a traffic light in there as soon as we can. Uh, the issue is, is really not the Oracle Road traffic, but the lack of traffic coming out of your neighborhood. It doesn't meet the warrants to safely put in a traffic light. Um, I've also checked the accident reports and the accident reports also um, conclude the same thing. There, there hasn't been a problem. In fact, there's been one accident and it's not been attributed to the, uh, um, to the intersection with your neighborhood over the past five years. It was a sideswipe going down Oracle. Um, that said, um, there's a commercial development right there on the corner of Ramsfield Pass and Oracle Road, that, that dirt lot. Um, we anticipate when that dirt, when that goes in, that's going to generate enough um, traffic to finally warrant that light right there. Um, but, um, and I've mentioned this in the report that's going out, we cannot install a traffic light unless it meets warrant because inadvertently in trying to do the right thing, um, you end up doing the wrong thing. You can create a you can create a more unsafe uh, situation. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like you'll continue to monitor it, and where it warrants it, the city will install one. Um, thank you. And then I also wondered about the types of retail establishments. I know years ago when the marketplace was created, it was initially designed to be upscale retail, um, which you know did not happen. Um, I wondered what the thoughts were now. Do you already have some retail establishments um, saying they want to um, belong here? Sure. Thank you, Ms. Sylvan. Um, yeah, um, I, I'm not, I never know how to answer the question of upscale because one person's upscale is another person's not upscale. So um, the goal is to get retailers in there. And, and obviously um, the, the more successful it is, you know, the, the higher the, the cost, the lease rent will be to, for people to come in. There's really a desire and there's been a lot of interest from some um, exciting restaurateurs, um, both um, local, which is really cool. What they're excited about is this vision. And a lot of the vision honestly entails putting um, people living, living on the site. So um, we don't have any retailers to, to announce, um, but there's a lot of, this has gotten a lot of excitement within um, both local and other kind of retail industries as 
the one of the only sites in in southern Arizona that's really looking at this type of development again similar to some things that have happened up in Scottsdale and North Phoenix that have really revitalized um, some areas and created that quality of life. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sylvan. So we've got three hands up. Those are going to have to be our our last three speakers of the night. So I'll go ahead and just announce who they are so that you're prepared. So the phone <clears throat> with the last four ending in 4554 is up first. Uh, Ms. Cheryl Lamona is on deck and then Linda Klotzer will be our, our final um, speaker of the evening. So if your phone number ends in 4554, please go right ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, can you hear me? We can, yes, go right ahead. Could you just tell us your name? It doesn't show up, yes. obviously. Uh, my name is Teresa Morrow, and okay. my husband and I are 20 year residents of Rancho Listoso. And I'd like to start out by echoing some of the comments that have already been made. Um, we do not agree with the apartment construction development overall. However, I know tonight is focused on um, a request to a PAD um, change regarding building heights for both the apartment complexes and hotels. And um, I'd just like to say my input, my husband and my input is that we would like the town of Oro Valley to deny um, that request to the PAD. Um, the negative impact overall to the town of Oro Valley and the current residents' quality of life is unacceptable with the proposed changes. This overdevelopment will have a short and long-term negative impact to natural resources, particularly water, which is uppermost in all of our minds right now. Um, I do have a question. Um, earlier, it was said that um, the marketplace is neighborhood four and that the building heights um, will only apply to that neighborhood. But doesn't that set a precedent? And couldn't that be applied if other um, C1 commercial property owners want to have the same building height? Um, and then one last comment, I'm just formally requesting the town of Oro Valley to deny the proposed PAD application. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, Ms. Sylvan, did you have anything you would like to add? No, why don't we go, I, I don't know that there was necessarily a question to answer. I, I hear the comments, that way we can get to the last two speakers. Okay. Uh, Ms. Cheryl Lamona and then Linda Klotzer. So Cheryl, please, uh, you, would you like your video turned on? No, thank you. Okay, go right ahead, we can hear you. Okay, Cheryl Lamona, or Valley resident. I live in Rancho Vistoso. I'll be real brief. I do uh, concur with everybody's comments about the height and the size of the apartments. My question is related to, um, I see that you're interested in acquiring property from the town and ADOT and, um, and having a five foot uh, setback from the property line. And my question for the Tangerine Apartments is what, how far back from, the, uh, from Tangerine Road would the building actually sit if you are able to get these changes approved? And that would be the buffer yards and the setbacks. Yep, thank you, Ms. Sylvan. Um, I'm wondering if David Little or Rob Longacre are available to answer that. I don't have the plan in front of me. I don't know if you can unmute them, Michael. Oh, well, I see you there. I've, go right ahead if you can unmute on your end. I see your videos on, but nope. Got it. Yep. There you go, Mr. Little. Go for it. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Just a second. I'm 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 actually looking here. If you want to, if you want to move on, if there's another question, while uh, Cheryl, up. Cheryl, did you have another um, question while Mr. Little's looking that up, or was that your only question? No, I have a ton of questions, but I'll let somebody else get their turn. Okay. Thank you. Thank and you. Of course, as always, feel free to um, send those to us at ask at oralvalleyaz.gov and we can certainly put those into the record for the project and I'll have Mr. Little chime back in when he's able to find that piece of information. We'll go ahead and move along to uh, Linda Klotzer.
Okay, we can, it looks like you're unmuted. Would you like your video turned on? No, thank you. Okay. My name right. is Carla Ward. I'm, I'm actually here with my neighbor and oh, we okay. live in Ramsfield Pass. Um, I absolutely hate the idea of all these apartments going in. Um, I am very concerned about the traffic. I'm concerned about the amount of noise that's gonna come out of that beer garden because you know, the beauty of Oro Valley is the openness, the mountains and the quiet and the space. And you, and, and you guys are gonna ruin that. And not only that, the crown jewel of Oro Valley is Catalina State Park. You guys are gonna put so many people in it that we're gonna be on, on top of each other and not be able to enjoy the park. There's 109 acres for sale, again, um, right next to it. And I would think that the one good thing maybe the, the city council could do is buy it and donate it to the park so that we're not all on top of each other. You guys got it right <clears throat> when you made the, the marketplace low profile but you're gonna ruin it. And it's just a shame that you're not representing what the people want. You're representing what the developers want. They're gonna get everything they want and we're screwed. And that was my comment. Okay, thank you very much. And I, I want to reiterate that we require this process so that we can hear anybody and everybody's questions and comments. And I have noticed that- <laughs> That's um, members of uh, both the Planning and Zoning Commission and Town Council are also listening to tonight's meeting to take in the feedback. So I want you to leave this meeting knowing that you have been heard. So um, it looks so like- Michael, I, I do have uh, the answer to the setback question. Okay, the, sure. um, okay. It appears the closest point that the building will be is about um, 50 feet from the Tangerine right-of-way. That's the closest point. So it'll be, it'll- it, it'll be um, more in other areas. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, so that concludes, um, let's see, what time are we at here? I'm gonna be respectful of everybody's time. So it looks like we are past 7.30. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up here for everybody. Um, let's see. So I'm gonna conclude by again, inviting everyone to stay engaged in this process. Um, similar to previous meetings, the video and PowerPoint presentation for tonight's meeting will be uploaded to the project's webpage on ovprojects.com once it is finalized. Uh, the next opportunity to hear about the project and provide feedback will be during the planning and zoning commission meeting once scheduled. I would like to re again reiterate how vital it is to hear your comments and questions. Community participation is what makes Oral Valley a special place. And please send any questions and comments you may have following this meeting to ask at orovalleyaz.gov. Continue to stay in the know about all of the upcoming meetings and a new project information by checking ovprojects.com under the project name shown on this slide. Thank you for your attendance this evening and have a lovely evening.